Alright. Wait. That... Okay, and yeah. we're seeing the raster. He's confident in this pick. This can be an incredibly difficult matchup, especially because of Abs' potent kill power off the top and off the sides. Like one neutral mistake and you just go flying, whether it's off the top or mm -hmm. you get kicked a couple times. It can be hard to get back because of clouds destroying, catching a low recovery. But at the same time, Absa has a little bit of a hard time when she's being juggled. She doesn't have any good get off me tools, right. slow startup aerials. You can really bully her. And like you can't double jump out of combos either. Yeah. It's kind of one but of at the same time, things like Dare Down Smash might not be as efficient because of her weird weight. And I've actually heard that you want to do double dare spike out of that. Interesting. Because of her very weird combo weight. Jules Veil, very neutral counter pick. I mentioned earlier, a lot of Raster and Abs' favorite stages are pretty similar. So I can definitely see a lot of these players picking stages that work for both characters in the right. process. Pretty hard to kind of just get one that's all you. Yeah. None of them are like super, super swingy, especially in this matchup. I don't really know if Raster has any bad stages. No, Absa really doesn't. As long as, depending on how you play her, it's, you know, she's good on pretty much any stage. Yeah. People usually ban stages like Gates, which like I've seen Akashi ban, Blazing. But at the same time, I've seen a lot of players like Penguin be completely comfortable with those. Yeah. And I don't think they're the worst at all, especially when you can use up special movement on those stages just fine. Mm -hmm. She likes stages usually with thinner blast zones, depend depending on how you play. A lot of Absa's favorite stages are very player specific. Right. Usually a stage that one Absa loves, another one hates. It depends on how you play. But there's usually a couple very common picks. Jules Veil, vale, Tower, Treetop. Triple, yeah, Triple Tower, Treetop. Those are the big ones. And then Jules Veil vale as well. Looking pretty even right now. There's been a lot of like small neutral exchanges, no big fair chains off the side. Or right. like big raster combo. As I say that, interrupts the slipstream there, takes a trade, and just kicks him for it. Like mm -hmm. you mentioned, Raster has a really hard time with trades. Right. And he usually loses them. Kashi kind of smothering him a little bit in neutral. And just being able to get these kills really efficiently. This is that slipstream conversion. I think an up smash probably would have clipped him a little bit. Might not have killed, but it would have gotten the job done. Yeah. Ooh, tries to drift back on that down B, catching that aggressive recovery on stage. That was a really smart cloud bomb. Just thinking, like, okay, you know, I think he's going to get aggressive here. Let me just let that aggression. Yeah, it was meant to force Tap Scott either to just retreat or just challenge him straight up with a nair like that and just clip for it. I think his foot hitbox, he was probably not a couple frames, but just like if he faded back a little bit more, he would have avoided that. I think it was mostly just a timing thing. Like, he was hoping to get in before Cloud Bomb started, uh, just couldn't make it happen. Yeah, tries to go for that double dare setup to catch Akashi GI in yeah, the wrong way, but he gets out of that. Up air, off, yeah. yep. Yep. Very risky 12 stage. Seconds next. 12 seconds, and the stock's already gone. Incredibly explosive. I can see why he likes this, especially because the side blast zone is making it very easy to just keep Rast I and mean, keep Abs the DI in to be able to just exploit that. Because if Raster knows how you're going to DI, you will just eat a gigantic punish for it. Right. He's not paying these Thunderlines on reaction. He waited there a little bit for the, the Cloud Pop. Challenges the up tilt with an anti air. I mean, challenges the anti air with an up tilt, which is incredibly good for Raster. Boom. Good catch there. Kind of just getting the dare. Going back to the ground, coming back up and hitting him. But the up air from Akashi is coming right back. Akashi looking completely in control right now. Up. If he had the cloud pop there, he would have been able to just do cloud hop up air. Ending mm -hmm. that's in that game in just a minute. Tap got a little bit uncomfortable with that. Didn't want to overextend. He probably could have gotten a jump clap there and killed it like maybe 60. Yeah. Stage is very... We've, we've already seen it before with both players getting explosive setups. Mostly in Akashi's favor. But it's a confident pick for Tapscott. It might not be working out the most right now, though. Especially yeah. when his punishes haven't been as consistent. Coming with the Nair. Not going to be able to hit. drift with a clap. Up smash there. Yep, catching that high recovery with the, the up special. It looks rough right now, but just two good Raster Neutral Exchanges. And he can bring this either even or just straight up kill him for it. But he's got he's got to be patient. Yeah. He's, he's got to pick his timing very well, and just he, he he retreats very smartly because if he misses and he overextends, he just gets eaten with the up air and he loses the game. The whole game's on the line here. He has to be very careful. Up and up air. Ooh, Ooh barely misses that, just being a little bit too late. 
Yeah. Nerves coming in a little bit. Wants to really secure this. Just like that. See, Tap Scott just demandingly takes that. I mean, it was a very close game, but yeah, that ending was just super clean. Yeah, one good catch on the drift out there, and he just dies for it. Mm -hmm. Incredibly early percent, too. What was that, 60 before oh, the hit? Wow, let's see. Dash attack, fair, 61, catches the drift out. Incredibly early kill. That's that's why Rockwall worked for him. Yeah. It was looking bad at the beginning, but he found it at the end. Just stealing that game from his clutches. Pretty much just like reversing the momentum of those kills. That's all you need sometimes. That's all you need. Just one good neutral exchange. It was looking so good for Akashi, and then Tapscott just we're, we're seeing now why it was so good for him. He was confident, got one good catch on his drift, and just killed him for it, taking yeah. game two. Even if you get smothered most of the game, you just need one neutral exchange. Both these characters are incredibly explosive. Mm -hmm. And even though they're both relatively light, they can beat each other up really bad. Yeah, I think bad. I said this on my last commentary block, but really just air character matchups in general, they're always like this deadly no matter who you're picking against. Oh you know? yeah, all four of them are incredibly volatile. Yeah. They can just steal a game away with just one good neutral exchange. It's like slightly harder to say with Palm, but uh, she's definitely looking to be that yeah. way as her meta develops. It's I a little too early to tell. Mm -hmm. Ooh, great coverage on that, try and catch him Ooh. just stuck into that down B. That's a really good edge ride against Maple, especially when she has to just go low for recovery. You can uh. just hold Hold her there. Oh, wait. He still okay. his jumps. Yeah, that was actually smart to do the aerials to gain the extra height, too. Great up smash there. Yeah. Merch are definitely looking like a comfort pick. I know Akashi tends to like this stage. It's one of the neutral stages, and I wouldn't say it's like incredible for either character. I can just see it as a comfort pick for the most part. Sure, yeah. Akashi just trying to catch these low recoveries. Tap Scout has no resources. Cloud Kick there covers basically everything unless he drifted way too high. <laughs> Definitely just catching that ambiguous recovery. Ooh, Clapper was a little bit hasty there. Kashi was at like 20%, but got a little bit of damage off it. Ooh, the roll there working in his favor a little bit. Going to Kashi offstage. I like that turnaround, or just like running behind him to make sure he's getting that offstage interaction. Oh, nice. And Tascott taking the lead here. Yeah, his up smash setups have been really clean this game. He's getting that like that up air two hit just to pop into an up smash. Yeah. We got, we're seeing a lot of raster aerials right now. Up air, yeah, incredibly yeah. early kill from Akashi. It's a staple of this matchup where you can just get one fair and if a Taps up holding in, he just dies at like 40 before the fair. Mm -hmm. He tries to wait a little bit there, try and catch Akashi, maybe parry on that plat. Up tilt covers that so well. It's also yes. a little bit delayed, where it just automatically parry baits. Oh boy, this is scary. Yeah, gotta be super he smart. He had no slipstream, so he wanted to just be careful with that. Right. Trying to catch these landings with a nair just to stuff out with a hitbox. A little bit disjointed, so it gets the job done, especially when it can trade with Absol up special. Oh, no. Great parry there. Yeah. Game three going to tap, Scott. Both characters, both players shaking their heads a little bit. Mm -hmm. Kind of a tragic way to end the game, but Kashi's still in the set here. Got to bring all the, all the tricks here. Let's see these bands. Spirit, Power, and then I see Jules Veil is locked for DSR. Yeah. Spirit Tree is also another stage that Absa tends to love. Another, I guess, T stage if you're counting Tree, and then Triple, and then going to Treetop, just like that. The, the big staple stages I mentioned earlier. A lot of uh, the stages that Taps got wanted to ban, and then Akashi allowed. Oh, right. if he had the Cloud Hop there, I think Taps got would have just straight up died there. I know it's another comfort pick for Akashi. And it's a really good Absa stage, too. Mm -hmm. this, the blast zones might be relatively large, apart from the bottom blast zone being pretty thin from what I remember. Right. But it's it's a comfort pick for a lot of Absas. I can definitely relate to this pick being working out. Yeah, ooh, there we go. Even on the DI out, it wasn't hard enough out to actually matter. Yeah, very good for catching that drift.
Taj is looking pretty strong right now in this in this game. The biggest thing he has to do right now is just, of course, of course not die, but at the same time, Raster has a harder time getting those kills when his opponent's at a higher percent, apart from like a parry or any option like that. Yeah. It works out perfectly. <laughs> Parries are always like the, the great equalizer in a way. Everyone can benefit from them greatly. Gonna be... Yeah, Cap's looking much more comfortable right now, especially when he has that burden off of Akashi being at a triple digit percent. Yeah. Great reset there with the parry bait. I was almost expecting a double clap right there with that kind of positioning, maybe just slightly I too low. I think that would have worked out. I think Tapcom didn't want, didn't want to risk it. Possibly. Ooh, great Ooh. drift there, but it doesn't matter. Akashi Even... just catches him trying to reset. Even missing the up air still works out. Akashi just crosses him up a little bit with that those down tilts. Miss input coming out from Tap Scott. He has no resources. I actually don't think that was a miss input. I think he wanted his resources back. On the down B? Yeah. Oh, I, I you, never mind. You, you need to hit, hit it. You need to yeah. hit like a, a things like Crack Pillar, Rock, or some sort of hitbox. Forgot box. about that. Getting the Thunder Line, and is that going to be another Scrock Hill? No, actually. Just like that, Tap's catching on to those, catching on to those Cloud. Placements. He's trying to parry a lot of these now. He can tell that's just the way he's going to get this kill. Mm -hmm. Is just parry. See, just like that. Yeah. Rasta may have a hard time getting those set up for triple digit percent, but if he can get a cloud parry, then that's just that's the work done for him. Or even an aerial parry, like any kind of parry, let alone just clouds. And that's kind of scary if you're Akashi, because now you really have like even less room to make mistakes. Possibly just looking for the Thunder Line right now. Tap's got his no resources. Has to go oh. low. Catches that. Really good tech there. Yeah, Ooh, I like the, the... hitbox on the Nado catching him. I like the use of not holding Nado we've seen from Tap Scott. He's been really smooth. Oh, that oh that killed him. Oh. Barely just not hitting that ledge. Yeah, I mean, okay, it's not working out every time, but there are some times where these, like, you know, the fluctuations in height are really smart. Yeah. Cap's got shaking his head a little. I know he tends to get a little bit emotional. I can see that kind of throwing off his mental for the rest of the set, especially because he looked very frustrated. Yeah, at that. like, that's actually surprising, too. He was, like, his feet were above the ground. Yeah. He was incredible. Look at that. He was literally above. I think he was, like, a pixel or two off. It had to have been that, yeah. Gosh, he was ready for the cloud kick, and then he didn't even need it. Yeah. They were both surprised at that, honestly. Game five. What are these bands from Akashi? I didn't even. Okay. Rock wall for DSR, merchant for DSR. So, what are we <laughs> looking at? Looking about hideout. I've seen blazing, frozen, spirit. I can see those, especially when you have Taps been picking spirit against a lot of other people. That's true, but Taps was also banning spirit tree earlier. So they're both banning it against each other. Right it's now. risky. It's like rock wall. I can except kind like of the top get it, for the most part, and then you get recovery mix-ups. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to see what stage we got here, and if if these bands ended up being the ones you needed. Forest floor. I know most apps is like this stage. It's basically Pokemon Stadium too, with the two platforms. There's a thin top blast zone. Mm. Ooh, if Tapscott got that double nair at the perfect angle, I think he would have just straight up died for yep. it. Oh boy. Yeah, a thin top blast is going to benefit both players a lot here. And, oh, okay. Really strange is up B right there. That I was... think that might have been meant to catch Akashi trying to go high. Because Possibly. Because it's doing up B to catch floaties off the top. It's it's a good option. It's just really risky. Right. In the same vein as trying to do, like, sweet spot up B mid combo against, like, a crag or an Edelus or another large body. Mm -hmm. It's a good option against floaties. It's just the risk reward on it is... Not the best, especially because if you miss it, you just eat a gigantic punish. Especially as a character right. against Abso. But he's had success in this first stock so far. For sure. Oh my god, 50 sick kill off the top just from holding in on that. Yeah. His lead's just getting reversed incredibly quickly. A matchup like this, very, very volatile. Definitely seen both, both players flubbing a little bit. Dash docking and trying to throw tax right off stage. Catch that. The tech option really good there. Akashi just holding in. Ooh, that clap almost got a sweet spot. That definitely would have killed off the top. Oh, just barely not getting the dash attack. Good tech in from Akashi to avoid that down tilt. 
actually killing uh killing these slipstreams really efficiently. Things like jab or just trying to just straight up parry them. Right. Using lingering hitboxes to prevent that. And when Rasu doesn't have that burst movement speed to whiff punish basically whatever the hell he wants, it's incredibly good to just get rid of that as fast as Right. And Akashi uh, up right now. It's game five. And the extra credit's gonna count here. Yeah, the best thing he can do is just hold this lead as long as possible. If this stock gets lost for him, it's really bad, but he's at fishing percent for Raster. Yeah. And I think this is a lot of really good extra credit, even if he loses the stock pretty quickly. Uh, the first thing Tap has to do is just get this. And just like that, parry up B. Kashi is a huge lead, but at the same time, it, it is Raster. We've seen him clutch those games before, like in the Rockwall game. Just one or two good hits. But Tap's got his off stage. Great usage of his resources there to just sneak back on stage. But he was still in the corner there. Hits him out of the Thunder line. Kashi oh. just really wants this. Yeah, and just barely. Oh, no. no. Both players just shaking their heads. They know that was That's not the best way to end the set. Really rough way to end it off, yeah. <laughs> and just like that, our top four is finalized. We've mm -hmm. got Giga Bowser and ZB in winners. And then Akashi playing Koda for fourth. Akashi way on the run of his life right now. Yeah, seriously. Really He's had a lot of, of really, really good performances recently with a fifth at cost. Beating, I think, Uda and someone else. I remember he played Uda because uh, uh, Uda beat Zaro. Yeah, not 100% sure. 